my first girlfriend's last name was Dwyer. Oh, for real? Whoa! Yeah, in in Pennsyl- in Pennsylvania. That's crazy. I wonder if we're related. I mean, well, most of my family's in like like Michigan. <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe not related, but it is it is interesting. I had flashbacks. I got broken up with on Valentine's Day, so no way. I'm gonna try not to subliminally <laughs> hold that against you. Oh my god! No, 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 no. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Creative Blog. We're your host, V. And Sean, we interview people in the creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We ask people on our social medias if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. Today, we have with us Jason Dwyer. Bing, 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 bing. Hello. <laughs> with a little Hi. cat on his lap. That's right guy's recovering doing well he's got a like a big orange kind of like flower cone right now oh yeah yeah yeah. you showed me the picture of that that looks actually kind of comfy honestly he's been he's been really he's really taken to it like as a pillow <laughs> so i <laughs> i think it's worked he came, he came home from the vet with like one of those plastic cones mm-hmm. and immediately like was able to sneak it off like in his carrier in the car yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so you know we had to make the switch and he's taken to this one a lot better i used to draw this character called the banished prince and it was this cat who had a cone of shame on (laughs) and and it was like a sort of realistic cat head but like cool warrior body (laughs) (laughs) do you draw your cats much you know we can start tonight i've drawn like maybe a couple of little ones with them i I think it's mostly just pictures because I'm like, oh, look at him. Click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true, though. I feel like I feel like when you're a student, maybe you like draw a bunch, maybe like the pets, and then like eventually you're professional and you're like, I don't have to do this anymore. I can just take a picture. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Dra- drawing your pets is totally for amateurs. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I mean. That's what I said. You didn't even say that. We're just like putting words. This is in your mouth. this is the this is the hottest take that that Visa we we've we've had NFT guests on, and this is the hottest take that uh, that V's ever said. Yeah. That <laughs> drawing drawing your pets is for students. Oh, God. Okay, so <laughs> talking about being a student, <laughs> I guess I'll ask you: Did you go to art school, Jason? I did. I went to an art institute, San Diego, one of the ones that's, I think, like, I think they're all defunct now. Really? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like, a, or at least, like, they're not, not all of them are working at the capacity they used to. Does your so, degree still count? I hope so. I mean, so, I feel like I, some I think, of those schools, like, the, the, the degree, <laughs> like, went away, <laughs> like, when they close, and it's like, wait, what? It's It's sort of like... It feels like like going back in time and like killing your father and then you start disappearing. Like no, <laughs> no. Like, like do I exist without this thing? I should double check on that. I just assume we were all still good. I might have to make some adjustments. <laughs> well, this this is actually good good to tell students because I, I I don't I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if a job of has ever asked me where I went to school as like a like hey you can't get into this job unless you went to this good school or something i don't know yeah i i've only ever had to put that on in like like a form when i'm applying out and i assume that they're not even really looking at it anyways yeah i feel like the only reason you would ever like have to worry about a degree at least in in animation is uh if you're an international uh person where like because then you have to do yeah. your visas and all of that you, thing, you but, have like, to have it too yeah uh, that yeah makes sense. But uh, if you're if if you're American and like looking to work in an American on an American show, then mm-hmm. it's not as I don't yeah. I think they just look at your drawings. <laughs> Do you know if it's the same the other way around? I have no idea. I I I wonder. I I would guess. I mean, it would make kind of sense that. But I think also the thing is that like after a while, at least when for visas to the US after a certain amount of experience in the field that is kind of more important anyway it's like the degree like is less relevant that the experience you have and then you can just like have your CV kind of like speak for itself yeah I think I know a few artists who like have got like an exceptional person visa I think is what it's called Mm -hmm. yeah it's like oh this 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 person they're just built different we got to get them in here 
I wish I had exactly. a piece of paper that told that said that I was an, exce- an exceptional person. It's right? actually, yeah, I I got that visa, the O one visa. You it, have it, one? It, Whoa! An exceptional I, person visa. I know it's like, but it's like it, it's. I it gave me the most inspo- imposter syndrome ever because you have to to reach out to a lot of people and ask them to write down that you're exceptional and it's like imagine like <laughs> like it's the most uncomfortable experience because <laughs> you guys would qualify because you guys have worked on all these like amazing shows so imagine reaching out to all of your showrunners and asking them like hey can you can you tell immigration that i'm like <laughs> so great <laughs> man that's that that's really funny I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't think about those details, but (laughs) I feel like I would just crumple myself up into oblivion, like in awkwardness, like just fold myself into eternity. So how many, how many people did you have to get to say that you were um, exceptional, V? Oh, you have to get around. I think they want somebody, something like 10. But I don't know if there's ten. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's ten that I can get. I mean, hey, you guys, you when you really, good. when you really want something, you like leave your what's the word? Your ego. Your ego at the your, door. Yeah. You're like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask everybody, and if they turn me down, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to leave your ego, ego at the door to get a, a piece of paper that inflates your ego. I know, yeah. right? That's, how That's the first part of the process. <laughs> yeah, if, if you in the uh in in the comments think that I'm an exceptional person, I'm looking for ten comments mm-hmm. to try to put on my visa. <laughs> visa. <laughs> oh my god, where are you going? That would be so funny. This guy's going places. <laughs> Do they allow you to put that on your visa? Oh my I'm, god, he's going places. <laughs> All right, all right. We we got like oh, way school. off track. We got school, way... school, 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 school. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was what was the one of the big things after graduating that surprised you in between uh, going to school for this and like the industry, like something that you learned pretty quickly or something? Rude awakening. I learned pretty quickly that uh, finishing school was not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I when I when I left Amber my partner was already working in games in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh so I moved in with them and I just had my like you know my portfolio I made outside of school and I'm like that's it. I did it. I did the thing. Cool. Jobs will be coming now, right? Since I've got a degree and I've got the portfolio. Oh and my gosh. No, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> So like, you know, and Amber, Amber was like very good about like being breaking down the kind of reality of the situation where it's like, hey, I think you need to think about like, because, you know, when you go to an art institute, they kind of have you touch a little bit of everything. Like, you know, like a little bit of modeling, a little bit of editing, a little bit of like, like effects, a little bit of storyboarding and like a little bit of animating. And it's just like, it's not a little bit of Monica. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know. <laughs> Monica, Sandra, and Rita, they don't make a, a <laughs> like a cohesive portfolio. Man, put that on my tombstone. <laughs> that's a that's a good that's a good saying. That we need to steal that and make a shirt out of that. Uh. Go for it. I think I signed away my rights when I entered the podcast, right? So it belongs to you now. Uh, yeah, we gave you very extensive contracts to sign mm-hmm. before you came in here. Oh, yeah. First look yeah. into the creative club. Um, backstage but that's that's so true what you you mentioned um jason because i feel like that is such a common misconception i feel like i had a little bit of that too and did, did your school kind of encourage you and the other students to go for internships and whatnot or a little bit yeah because like my my arts institute in san diego had good relationships mostly with like majorly with game companies over there because Mm -hmm. um like i don't think they had it like like a relationship with i think there's a rock star san diego some students went there but i think a lot of that was them doing their own kind of like work um but the school had a relationship kind of with like uh, there was like a sony online entertainment there and a mad cats was getting into developing games Mm -hmm. so like that's kind of where a lot of students like would kind of go afterwards and i think like uh we had some teachers with connections to cartoon network so i actually did apply for a cartoon network internship 
and it was going oh. to be on a generator Rex, and it was like me and my my friend Chris, who were up for it, and I didn't end up getting it, uh, but Chris did, and like oh. it sounded like it was a really great experience, but it's also like you have to make that drive. It's like a two hour drive, like sometimes more from San Diego to like Cartoon Network every day. Oh my so, like, god! Yeah. yeah. <gasps> so like that that commute was a uh, like really killer. I I was just like ooh. Wow. That would have been rough. Oh my god. I... Was that your first rival? Your first no, rival? he's not my rival. He's Chris, my friend, Chris was you know? your first rival and enemy? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. He he does tattoos in San Diego. Uh he, he's he, I mean maybe probably in Tekken. Like that's his that's his big game. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> oh my god. Well, so so that happened and then you were like, "Oh fuck, reality check." I'm going to have to train, you know, a hundred hours to, what did you do next? Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, essentially like Amber, like, uh, we're, in, we're just kind of breaking it down with me. Like, I think you need to think about what you really liked doing when you were in school. And I think you need to make whatever you're looking for, like your portfolio focused on that. Mm -hmm. Cause no one, no one knows what they're looking at when they're looking at this. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> that's um, actually really sweet because did you did you both go to the same school uh no yeah. amber amber like i think mo most of amber's like a uh, school came from uh watts atelier which i went to for a little bit mm -hmm. but like um that's that's like like a traditional like sort of painting school that was also like around san diego and that's where that's where they went and they they were like kind of doing like book covers and like game like uh vis dev mm -hmm. stuff at that time that is so cool i that is so cool that you and did you guys uh kind of like meet because you share like similar like art communities i like to ask about communities because i feel like it's a huge motivator right like when you're like kind of like when you're like a student sometimes you need like a little extra push to keep drawing so i guess yeah. my question my question is like how did you guys meet i guess yeah, we met like on online because oh, my cat's getting up. But like we met online at a like a paint chat. Mm. I had I, I had been hot off quitting World of Warcraft. I sold my account <laughs> <laughs> and I was like uh, all my friends were still playing. So it's like I had all this free time at night and uh, I was like, well, I want let me get back into this drawing thing a little bit. How, how much and did I you didn't... make off your account before you get too far off this? People are uh... going to ask. I think I think I sold it for like something like eight hundred, like as it, when I was a teen. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Wait, this. Yeah. I mean, it was a. You had a lot of hours in in it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, it, this was before I think any of the expansions came out. Like I had all the like the at the time the like top end like raiding gear, and I wow. was just like. I actually don't like this anymore. <laughs> Guys, don't go to art school. Just make World of Warcraft accounts and sell it. What are you doing? But yeah, yeah, I, I just sold that. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get an Xbox 360. I'm gonna get like a, an like an actual nicer like tablet pen at the time. Like it was like one of those Wacom like Graphire somethings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, I hadn't um like acquired Photoshop yet, so I just remembered like, oh, like whiteboards and paint chats. So I hopped in one and I started just like, I found one that was empty and started doing life drawing. Oh, very cool. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna learn. And I think like uh, in, the, in that particular paint chat, Amber was a mod. And I don't know, I was drawing like nude models from reference. I'm like, oh, maybe I think I was probably in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you, did you like get scolded by a mod and then rizzed your way into a relationship with the mod? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I, I think, I think they, they goofed on me. I don't think I got like in oh, that okay, trouble. Okay. okay. That would have uh, been like, funny. Like uh, yeah. the enemies to lovers. <laughs> Situation. <laughs> Yeah, oh, not but him no, again. Yeah. he's gonna draw naked ladies. No, oh gosh, no, stop it! Wait, but he's so kind in his eyes. <laughs> so what if he has this pornographic fault? <laughs> so what if he's a sinner? I mean, his technique is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, we just kind of met from there and like kept like talking over the years and eventually like you met up at conventions and. Things just kind of blossom from there. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And that's so cool that you guys were, like, giving each other advice for, like, portfolios and stuff. Because I do feel like sometimes, especially w while you were, like, mentioning, like, graduating from college, it can be kind of, like, 
easy to get lost at that moment in life. And so I guess my question would be kind of like, how long, like, what was it like for you when you graduated? And how long did it take you until you landed your first like industry gig from there? Yeah. So like a, a lot of things I was doing out when I first got out of school was like I was, you know, I did I did some kind of random freelance projects mm -hmm. for and I don't even know how I ran into these people. There were like forums you could post at and be like, this is my work and this is what I, I've done. And there were things like that. And I think uh, eventually I did like cleanup animation work on Skullgirls. Yeah, uh, that's so cool. Uh, oh, cool. Like, uh, yeah, that was and that was a lot of fun because I like love fighting games and like the animators on that team were so cool so to you know have a part in kind of doing the cleanup and like bringing those things to like like the you know the visual like in the game you see was yeah it was that's really crazy. cool and like uh i had a i had a really great uh, time doing it and that's that's eventually from there because i did those cleanup animations one of my teachers who worked uh, sony online entertainment they had this they had this like uh, top down like strategy game that was like sprite based and like so because uh because i had done that he's like oh they, they're always looking for people why don't you you do this and that ended up being a pretty decent monthly gig for a while like uh on this game called pox nora i don't know it was i i'd never heard it before but it was like a lot of like kind of realistic like fantasy creatures and there was like mm -hmm. a card game and like a top-down strategy element it was kind of neat and it was a it was a like it was a great like experience right like out of school because i would just like get my assignment in an email and then i'd like send them an email with all my stuff mm -hmm. and then i'd have enough money to pay rent <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> <laughs> did you get any like job overs or anything or was it just kind of like all right sending in this into the void and wait until the next assignment kind of deal it's it that's exactly it was kind of just sending something to the void i'm like <laughs> i guess they must like me because i keep getting these every month <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> oh my God. And how was uh, doing taxes for this? It's like, did they give you like a, cause like we're yeah. close to tax season. So um, it's on topic. Mm -hmm. It's on brand. Yeah. They would, they still send me like a, like, I think I like was still getting like, you know, free the freelancer form. Mm. So like I would do that and that'd be fun. But I was like, we, I was in an apartment with four other people or like three other people at the time. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. And so, so how long did you do that for? How long did you do the, um, I want to say Skullgirls Skull was like, cause I was doing Skullgirls while working at SeaWorld a lot of the time. I feel like I was doing that, like, also while finishing up my, like, last year in, like, college. So just coming in absolutely drenched. <laughs> yeah, from, yeah, From yeah. being in the splash zone. <laughs> no, you just slip and slide around. I, no, that that's it. <laughs> I, I didn't have anything important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, essentially. I was, I was like, a, I worked in, like, one of the rides where I, like, I press a button, it goes up, and hopefully nothing wrong happens. And if it does, I have the training of what to do. <laughs> oh my god that is so scary though oh my gosh do you feel like that helps you maybe like down the line to like manage the stress that comes with being a board artist <laughs> a little bit probably like i'm glad that nothing ever went wrong but you got to be ready for something to go wrong no, no, the ride's no. gonna crash or photoshop's <laughs> gonna crash or storybook <laughs> pros gonna crash. yeah what, what's your what's your protocol procedure for when a scene breaks and how did you apply your uh your sea world ride experience to becoming a storyboard artist mm -hmm. just for the clip yeah you just immediately you just immediately it goes down immediately call security <laughs> you gotta, oh, uh, you... oh you need revisions security mm -hmm. and then you get the rope ladder and you get <laughs> all that stuff Honestly, though, it's like if if like your file crashes, IT is kind of like security and can be like, yeah. uh, um, help. <laughs> Please help. Please. But I do feel like I feel like Server Pro is such a weird program that I feel like you just need to talk to other board artists. Like, I don't think IT can really do anything most of the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you just gotta pray that your your last previous save or your auto save is there for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like there's just there has to be a graveyard somewhere of unsaved work. Like all of the hours and hours and hours of lost work 
storyboard work that's is floating around somewhere, like collected someplace, you know. Mm-hmm. Just all all the art that's just never been seen. <laughs> Episodes that were just <laughs> right. a little, just a little bit different. <laughs> it's like a, uh, it's like heaven, but for Photoshop for Sora profiles, <laughs> like little bits of scenes, like. <laughs> Just yeah, it, I I wonder. Yeah, I mean, maybe the same thing can be said about like scenes that get cut. Like it, you know, like they got they've gone to the great cutting room floor, you know, th- where the place where you killed your darlings. <laughs> like, where did the darlings go? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. So you were so you were working on Schoolgirls, and then you worked with the Sony gig, and then. Eventually, you were like, okay, I got to redo my portfolio, try to get the gig. How did you figure out you wanted to do storyboards? Like, how was that process? Or like, what was that process like? I think it was just like, that was, I, I, had, a, I had a good time with it. And I was like, really thinking about it, like, this is, I think this is the most fun part of drawing. Like, you get in and you do a little, like, you figure out, you actually figure out, like, the, you figure out the whole drawing. And then you don't got to do all the other stuff that takes a long time, like rendering and all that. Mm. <laughs> storyboard artists are lazy. No, no, no. But it's like you do a lot of around. that. Yeah. <laughs> you just you do a lot of it. You just do yes, a lot yeah. of like the fun part of drawing. So if you have the endurance and I I think I do. And and that so that like appealed to me is like I think because like any art job is like just it's it's difficult. So you gotta like think about like which one that you got you got what it takes to kind of like like handle the stressful part of it and so because like i think like oh this this is like i'm doing a lot more of like you know a lot of the fun part i think i can i can deal with the uh endurance needed yeah that makes a lot of sense honestly i i relate to that a lot because i feel like i'm also just kind of like i don't for the longest time i just i I feel like doing an illustration is so what's the word like it's not scary but like Awesome. It's, it's it's fun <laughs> also, but it's also like kind of like scary it's kind of like anxiety inducing because for me for the longest time i wasn't good with color mm-hmm. i my inking was just okay and i was not good with backgrounds everyone that follows v's art is rolling their eyes right now <laughs> about v being bad at color listen listen <laughs> listen listen i I, I had to like learn color like for real like I like to study that because for the longest yeah. time I was just doing like black and white yeah. so I do feel like boards are like like a great way to kind of like finally be like hey I have some skills I don't know you know I don't know sure. it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. when you're like a little bit insecure about your art I feel like boards is like a great way to kind of be like uh, not be too precious with your drawings so hey only do sketches how about boards <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> But yeah, no, that's so cool that like that was kind of like the thought process, like, okay, what do I enjoy doing? And so like, so what was your portfolio like at the moment when you realized like that you wanted to maybe do boards? Like, did you already have some boards? Did you have comics? Like, did you have to make a bunch of boards from scratch? Yeah, I only had like one board from school. So I needed to like, I needed, I needed to get in there. And so I started taking classes online, uh, which was really cool. I went to CGMA. And uh, I think like there was a teacher like Scott McLeod at the time who taught at uh who who worked at DreamWorks who taught and that Wait, was like Scott McLeod is he no I'm confusing him with another cartoonist I think I was like is he the guy that wrote uh, Understanding Comics Oh yeah yeah man. oh gosh maybe I got the name wrong That's the guy from Highlander Yeah <laughs> but it, it was a, it was like a, it was a name like that like uh, gosh I wish I remembered right uh, off the top of my head but it was a really great class he's a really good teacher he's probably busy still working in feature but uh yeah i did that class and then i followed that up and i did um rad the rad how to school at the time like rad secrets oh you oh, did nice. oh can you can you talk about that a little bit because i i feel like um i have recommended that program to some people who are like oh what should i do i don't know if i should like do a a college or if i should focus on like a, on an online course like a more focused online course and i usually recommend uh, rad how to school but like i i've never taken it myself so i would love to hear from you who's taken it <laughs> yeah yeah so that was really great because it was really like it was truly like focused on boarding like a uh, rad like 
broke everything down in a, like a really easy to understand way. And uh, at the time, like you know, I was still doing, you know, I was I was I was still working at Sony. I was I was like uh, still living in San Diego, and it was like, oh, this is like these online classes are great. They're accessible, and like you know, he looks at your like you know everybody's board gets got looked at when you did your assignments, and like it helps you, you know. I think really point me in the right direction. And I, when I eventually got to meet him uh, at CTN was when I got the advice, like, okay, so if you're, you're serious about this, like um, I th you need to think about making the move to LA at the time. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. So what, what year was this just to kind of like, God, I think um, I want to say that like, this was the 2012 CTN, okay. I think. Yeah, and then I moved. We moved to LA around like 2013, mm -hmm. like or I think early 2013 or late 2012. And both of you guys were like, both you and Amber were like, okay, we're gonna do that animation thing. Or where I was, uh, Amber already um doing animation at the time. Amber was uh, at the time like still doing game stuff, like and okay. still was and was able to work from home like already pretty comfortably. Oh, that's nice. Awesome. Yeah, so like before that was even like just such a focused thing now, like like uh, Amber just kind of had something going. And then uh, eventually, like I think uh, after I got into animation, Amber was able to pivot over as well. That is so cool. Because mm -hmm. like, you know, Amber Amber's like really, really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to get them on the on the pod eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> That is so cool. That is so cool that like Rad that you you got to meet him and like uh, did he ever did did you ever get any like or any recommendations from him or like did you ever like uh, take a test for one of his shows? You know, I I I did not. Like I I think as soon as I got into Cartoon Network, I was just I was just there for so long. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Because you you got it. So what was your first show at Cartoon Network? Yeah, the first show I got into was the on the second season of Clarence. Hey, um, yeah, that's awesome. I I love that show, and I I the like it was a lot of like like uh, people starting on the second season at the same time, so everyone was like really excited, like you know, meet each other and like hang out and get to know each other. So like the the vibe was like great. <laughs> it was a really wonderful first experience. That's almost like a season one almost, because if you if the crew was all new, yeah, like I, I mean there was still like you know a lot of people from season one, but like uh, there was just like there was a like a basically like it's like think like another like class comes in like a new freshman class, mm -hmm. and like, that's see, that's what I felt I was joining with like a new kind of freshman class of like a uh, like a uh, people because I think um like a uh, a few of them had like come from you know different spots like I think like Mark Galez came from like feature um like oh, over that's right yeah yeah uh, shout out to uh spencer roth bell who we interviewed mm -hmm. on episode uh 111 yeah spencer rules head of story um but yeah i love i love spencer shout out to spencer mm -hmm. yeah spencer spencer and the the team like from season one like uh it was it was a really great environment on season two like uh I love it. I'm really, I'm really thankful that I was able to be like a part of that. And so, I uh, can you tell us a little bit about like what was it like taking the test and like, like a little bit where like your head was at? Like, was it stressful at all, or like was it? Did you kind of like know what you wanted to do? Or, like, like you know, like tell us a little bit about the tests or and what that was like. Yeah, the the test was like a like a pretty like reasonable length. Like the the boys find like an anthill and they like find some like i think it was your choice of like what objects they have to like try and mess with it and that was like a lot of fun but it was like also i think like i i just got in so i'd only done like a couple of tests before i think that so i was just like you know when you're those those early first kind of couple of tests you do you feel a lot of like oh god oh, oh geez who knows if i'll get this chance again i gotta mm -hmm. i got i hope it works out <laughs> mm -hmm. was it a storyboard driven test yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, and that, and it's a storyboard driven test on top of everything else. I mean, that mm -hmm. that's an extra layer of, I think, challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I oh, God, I hope they think I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like, much... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just gonna say, I think that's what's so scary about doing tests for board driven shows is that like you're literally putting like your your not only do you have to draw, but you also have to like know how to write and be funny and that's so scary to be like mm -hmm. to think like that they might just look at your test and like roll their eyes or whatever 
Yeah. This person's just good at drawing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I think I've said it a few times. Like, I've I've been funny enough to live so far. So (laughs) I hope I can keep it going. What what advice (laughs) would you give to somebody taking a test like that where you have uh, so much lead way and so much freedom and you're like pitching gags? And I mean, it's it's a a level of constraint like the constraints are taken off so much on a test like that what 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 mindset would you advise someone to get into for me like what i ended up doing like because it's like once you start drawing and once it's drawn like the question of like oh god is this like you can't tell what like once it's once it's drawn i don't know if it's funny anymore but so it's it's like you really got to hold on to like this made me laugh in the beginning so I think it's I think it's still good. It made me crack up a little bit. I maybe told a, like one other person like the bit and they got a little giggle. So I think it's going somewhere. So it's like just trying to like have have faith in those kind of first initial like uh, laughs you give yourself or somebody you feel confident enough to like share like what you're trying <laughs> and just uh yeah see it through. Do you, do you remember what your uh, solution for the scene was? God, I think I think or, or what joke you pitched? I think I had sumo. I think they found um one of those like recorders, like those like those like awful sounding recorders. I think I had <laughs> like sumo a yak like back or something. Yeah, not no. It's like um, it's not a. It's like it's like the it's like a little flute, but it's called a recorder. I'm trying to oh, remember what they were record. called. Okay, okay. Oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So they they found one of those and they were messing with it. And I think I tried having Sumo like play into the anthill, and Jeff didn't want him to like disturb the ants. Oh nice. And, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I, I you know they end up in like they end up like wrestling and getting into mischief. What song? <laughs> what's think. what song do you think ants? Do you think ants would like? I bet, I bet, I bet they would love like some kind of ASMR. <laughs> true, true. And so just yeah, just whisper love. song by the Ying Yang Twins. Mm-hmm. Like just a half-eaten fruit being blown in the wind ASMR. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey. Yeah, abandoned picnic ASMR. Abandoned picnic ASMR. That's really funny. <laughs> abandoned picnic ASMR club hits. <laughs> yeah it's oh just ve- it's very soft like tss, 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 just like really really low bass really really in Man, the it actually sounds like a song i would probably listen to when i worked out yeah mm-hmm. i like i like all my music to sound like it comes from like two doors over <laughs> or it's just <laughs> it's just like very distant bass yeah <laughs> the neighbors they're having a party but they're they're being a little bit respectful about it it's not too disruptive <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i feel like yeah i don't know i was gonna say something but it's so left field and i'm like all right no that's good i want to get back on mm-hmm. track i want to i think it's so funny that you were like yeah this, so how long would you say it was that scene so you came up with that idea you pitched it to a couple of friends and you were like okay this is getting a chuckle from me and from some people i trust how many drawings would you kind of like can't guess would go into a test like because i remember taking a test for Cartoon network and they're like don't do more than 60 drawings which actually sounds like a lot but it it goes really fast yeah, like, yeah. it does it does yeah. go fast. and I, I i i remember at that time like i'm going to keep it exactly 60 mm-hmm. i don't like uh because i i don't know i'm like they mean it i, I don't know they, like, I, I don't, <laughs> if i, go, I, if I like... go too little they'll be like this person's a slacker oh no <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, there was that. That is like, oh, if I do too too little, it's like, oh, he don't care. And if I do too much, I'm like, oh, this guy thinks he's something. So <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I gotta follow the exactly to the T what they want from me because I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> That's so funny. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. Did they have any other like? Because uh, I remember Sean, you talked about the test for regular show that had like a little extra bit of like, okay, Writing. like. Uh, writing like he's gonna cut a hedge into a certain kind of shape and what is gonna be the shape or like i remember when i took the we bear bear test there was a moment when they were like oh well, come up with a couple of like one drawing gags of like how they're trying to get the attention of the the sandwich person uh like the sandwich maker person and yeah. you 
do you remember if there was like anything like that like any anything other like little extra or if was it just like just that one specific prompt i'm willing to bet there was because there definitely was one on the craig one which was like uh, come up with your own like creek kid and mm. but i don't i don't quite remember what the clarence one was anymore yeah what, what's been your favorite test <laughs> what's been your favorite audition storyboard <laughs> test that you had to do I think I think it definitely was the the Craig one because like the the hey come up with a Creek kid at the end was like a lot of fun. I think um at the time I the, what I landed on was uh there was these like you know at the paintball kids who like had a paintball war. So the kid I came up with was like a like a press like a <laughs> a field photographer for that conflict. Oh, that's really funny. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that that's. That is funny. That's a cool angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like he's doing it for like school, like this, like AP journalism or something. Yeah. <laughs> how long were you on Clarence? Like, was it just a? Because I think the show was how many seasons did it get? Like three seasons. Yeah, I got mm. I got three seasons. So I was on I think like till twenty seventeen. Like just the beginning of twenty seventeen is when it ended. Mm. So how is it like when you know, when you when the first show? What, so you worked so hard to get on a show. Finally, you get the show. You're so excited. You're so happy. You have all your coworkers, and then you get the news that the show's over. Can you tell us a little bit about like what that's like? Yeah, I think uh, you know, it's it's a bummer. Like, uh, you because we all really li- we were on it because we were like we we really liked the show. So it it was rough to say goodbye and i think it's just like that that when that first show you're on ends it's like kind of devastating <laughs> a mm. little bit but you know you want to keep working you got to like keep looking for the next thing and at that time there was a there was a lot going on so That's i think true. Mm-hmm. yeah like a so when that ended i was doing i think freelance boards for like a I think like a couple of different shows. I think at one point I was doing like three different freelance boards, which. What are you doing? I, I d- yeah. What am I doing? I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, Wait, yeah. uh, three different freelance boards. That's crazy. At the That's same time. Work. Yeah. Like, well, it's just like, you know, things like line up in a way where like, okay, this one's on, on cleans. This one's like on like your thumbs and like, a. Uh, yeah, I, it's just like I wasn't quite sh- like you know I had gotten one show, so it's still like, is this, is this a fluke? I gotta mm. make I gotta know I don't know what I can secure or like how secure what is coming next is. So I don't know I I I I tried a bunch and uh, <laughs> yeah I I feel like the challenge of going from show to show is often not super simple or, or, or even freelance to freelance. Like people on the outside might it to people on the outside, it might look like you're just working fluidly for a while, but usually what ends up happening is you have one job and then you start another job halfway through that job or at the tail end of that job. So at one point you're working like two and then like to, in order to make sure that you don't have gaps in your work, you like say yes to multiple things that are staggered and that can be very hard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you, yeah, you don't know that? which one is gonna like turn into a full time gig. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and how do so you balance just... that? Or how 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 are you uh, time managing that? It's just one of those things where it's like you know, there's these uh, <laughs> there's it's just too much coffee <laughs> and just making sure like like I'm being efficient, I guess, with my drawings. Mm-hmm. It was one of those like when I when I start bored. Like for anything, what I do is I I call it's just the ugly, ugly thumbnail phase where I try to get as much done as I need for my section of the board, like like with what's immediately in my head as quick as possible with really tiny ugly drawings just so I have, at least it start to finish I can see it, mm. and then from there it it's just a lot easier to go and like just hit the ground running, mm-hmm. and I think it's like that was like the first time I kind of did something like that so. You know, I do all the like ugly thumbs, and then I'd like, like spread them out in the like storyboard pro uh, board file, and then I'm really motivated to get it done because I also don't want anyone to see those ugly drawings. 
So it's like, I'm like, you know, kind of like crossing them off and eliminate them as I like go through. I was like, okay, all right. No one has to see like <laughs> these <So> things. <laughs> I go, I go back and forth sometimes because sometimes the thing that gets me to move forward and propels me is allowing myself to do drawings that are making me laugh. And it's hard for me. It's hard to do that with like the quickest possible, really, really ugly drawings. Mm -hmm. How, um, when you're working on something funny and you're trying to get ideas down, do you ever run into that where you're like, ah, oh, but like, I want to, I want to draw, I want to see whether this scene looks funny enough to even keep in or whatever. Yeah. And that's, um, and like once that, that, kind of spot is done like i will truly jump around at any point in the board to like what feels like i got a clear vision on or what it, like oh, you said okay. like it's funny right then so once that whole thing's down i jump everywhere and i think a lot of the times like my my board will not make sense until <laughs> until it's finished because gotcha. i've just hopped around so many different spots in it to because yeah I, I feel the same it's just it's you want to hit the ground running on the things that like are immediate in your head and funny like as soon as possible it's so messy boarding yeah. is mm -hmm. so, so messy and it always feels like a, a shit show until the very end it feels like you're one of those guys that's uh like like you're trying to solve a case and there's papers all over the floor and there's like <laughs> string on your board and like it it, it doesn't come together as anything that makes sense till the end and you're hoping that the police commissioner doesn't swing by and, and look at what the case looks like so far or whatever, you know? Yeah. And it's actually, oops, sorry. Okay. Go, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and that's what the, the really ugly drawings are, like their insurance, that they're at least like some thread <laughs> sure. making it all connected <laughs> at some point. Oh yeah, sorry. You you were saying v. no. I, I was gonna say it's actually really interesting to hear both of you guys like working in a very non-linear way because I feel like there's like two types of board artists. There's like the linear kind and the non-linear kind. And for the for a very long time, I was only doing my boards linearly. So I was just doing like a, sh a shot per shot per shot per shot, like literally following the board the the script or the outline. And just translating that into but i feel like with experience i've learned to value the non-linear way of boarding a lot more because then you can you start from the bits where you're the most excited about and you can flesh those out like really well and then you kind of just kind of fill in the gap and mm -hmm. so there is Sometimes it's about the sustaining your motivation too, like encouraging yeah. yourself. And if you if you can give yourself a goal that you're like, oh, that that scene turned out well. I sometimes that helps you in your next scene. At least for me. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, no, I was just gonna say. I think it's just like it helps with pacing as well. I feel like sometimes when you like board linearly, you don't kind of flesh out the moments that you're excited about as much as if you were boarding non non linearly but that's just kind of my my personal observation on that and i mean i don't know have you ever tried to like board linearly jason yeah i think a lot in like a in the beginning is how i did it and i think i switched to like the non linear method when i realized oh this is going a lot faster cuz you're not you know you're not hitting any of those roadblocks as often mm -hmm. kind of especially, especially when you're doing like board driven where you're you're solving story and like comedy stuff as you go so like because i'm not getting held up at the roadblocks and i'm just kind of like hitting things as they're like clear to me and it's also giving me time for those stuff that's difficult for me to like kind of solve in the background of my mind or kind of figure out as i'm doing another scene that it connects to you know yeah i love that i think this is like such great advice and it's so great to be talking about it because i feel like that i've I feel like the very first time I got exposed to that kind of storyboarding method was very late in my career. I mean, very late, mm -hmm. at least halfway, you know, uh, which feels like a very late time. Did you just kind of figure it out by yourself or were you just kind of like comparing with other people's like way of working? Like, how did you stumble upon it? I, th I think I kind of like came to this sort of conclusion for me because a lot of a lot of my coworkers at the time were like they would with their partner work out a script beforehand mm. and uh like i'm like oh okay i'm like because that makes sense where it's like oh you have the script written out like you've collaborated together on that and then you can just work from there 
and so like i like i don't know i feel like i'm always like i don't know if i i always like i'm worried that i'm not drawing fast enough so i keep i thought like i need to get into the drawing portion as soon as possible and then like mm -hmm. i can solve it from there so i think that's where that kind of came from because uh i think i was always worried if i did the the writing like it all out method i wouldn't have a lot of time to draw but everyone else is like who did that like man they had good results so i don't know i i'm thinking about like next time i'm in that sort of position trying that <laughs> <laughs> well i think i think some people would would argue that the writing goes faster unless you are a slow writer which is also okay you know mm -hmm. I, I i feel like i'm a little bit of a slow writer so i tend to agree with like a, a little bit of a hybrid method, like maybe like loose thumbnail, loose thumbnail outline. I've 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 worked on on regular show. We would do a uh, sort of and uh, break it down beat by beat out like outline style, and then write in like possible lines that could be there, and then we divvy up, divvy it up, and then you could change it. However, when you actually get into the drawings for what makes sense, but on my own, I think that I I sort of do a mixture. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. bit of script, a little bit of um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, I also everything. have found that like if and this is a different way of working, doing a radio play like just mm. with scratch audio, just hearing how the the lines are said to one another, or even just like like uh like not thinking about the lines too hard, just like laying down how the characters might talk to each other, even if you change like every single word of the lines, like hearing that sequence sometimes can help too there's a bunch of different ways to do it i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's that's what's fun about this job is there's like you know so many ways to approach it and yeah it's it's i think everyone kind of goes through their own professional journey is finding out what works for you is, is like as long as you're all kind of like arriving at the same place which is a finished board you know? Yeah, <laughs> which is like really interesting that you mentioned that because it is both fun, but it is also like, have you, especially when you started storyboarding, have you ever felt like kind of crippled by the sheer amount of possibilities, you know, like, yes, which is another reason why I do all those like thumbs in the beginning, because I, I hate a blank page, it needs <laughs> to get messy as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good way. That's, a good, that's such a good way to approach it because I do feel like a lot of uh, students or people who are like learning boards, they're kind of like, well, how do I go from a script to a board? And it's kind of like, yeah, that's true. Like, how do you, one person do it? And it's like, you have to take like such a uh, leap of faith when you kind of start doing the boards because there's like literally nothing to go off from except like some words sometimes because sometimes like you guys were just talking about having to write the words too. Words can be tricky, but uh, the, the, the nice part about it too, especially like um, in a board driven show, and I'm sure it's like the same on other things is like when you're, when you, when I've gotten used to the job and like there's something reassurance is that it's a very collaborative process. Once the board is like a uh, pitched, you know, you're in there in the writing room, like uh, with like a lot of the story team and like sometimes like even like a, like other other members of the team to take a look at things and like pump stuff up and like bring something like you know bring some of their like sensibilities and humors to it so and getting to that portion is really exciting because like i don't know that's always like the funnest part is like everybody in the room like making each other laugh and like making sure that every everybody's board kind of becomes the best possible like version of itself yeah talking about pitching how is it like for you pitching the first time it's it's <laughs> Were you scared? I, I feel yeah a little bit and i think it's like the first time i pitched it's just i don't know throw yourself in there make a few little voices try and sell it uh, i put everybody else out of your mind as much as possible but maybe listen for a laugh if you need a boost if you get a laugh that's like okay cool keep going ride that energy because you, <laughs> you need it did you do a clarence impression i did I, I i i did clarence and sumos i think like one time i actually like started a coughing fit trying to do sumo's voice because <laughs> it, yeah it's such a it's, it's strain on the throat it's like, i don't know you know those yeah. those voice actors wow <laughs> yeah that's so true that's so funny that you did the voices i feel like sometimes like when i the first time i ever 
had to pitch my boards was when I moved here. It was on the Loud House, and everybody was like, "Dude!" Some of the people were like, some of the boys were like doing all the voices of all the characters, and I was just like sweating. I was like, "There's no way! There's no way! I can't! Like, I couldn't even like, <laughs> I couldn't even like relax. Like, I was like pitching so monotone at the beginning because I was like so scared." All right, V, give us your best impression of all of the Loud House characters. Yeah. Oh, my God. All, all, every sister. <laughs> I absolutely cannot. I, I cannot even, like, remember. I can't, I can't even remember how to draw them. And I drew them for at least, like, <laughs> two years and a half. So, right? You can <laughs> lose that day. muscle memory. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh. <laughs> v's, v's, V's like, hi, I'm Lincoln. Hi, I'm Lori. No, hi, I'm Lenny. Hi, literally. I'm Linda. Hi, yes. <laughs> like it's literally. hi, it's me, Lynn Jr. <laughs> oh, literally, yes. Even the nerd sister who's who's supposed to, because I, I don't even, I don't know the tropes. Like, I I guess it would be like this if I was the nerd, like Leafa. Oh, I guess. I like I guess. This. Hey. this voice actor V is coming out. Well, look at you. Stop. Stop. <laughs> He's making fun of me. No, I'm not. That was no. good. Oh, yeah. No, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's like I feel like that's like the like the lowest hanging fruit, and I'm like, no, okay, I'll just I'll just I'll just put intonation in it. That's what I'll do. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Try yeah. To do it. Well, well, that's it. That's the scary thing about pitching the boards, because that that's something that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Is uh, especially in shows like this. Yeah, good job. You can storyboard. Can you sell your jokes? Because yeah. if you pitch your joke wrong, your joke will get caught <laughs> so you have to like pitch your jokes mm. well or else like they might it might just like fall flat and then all your work gets thrown out the window just be just because of your performance even yeah and that that's kind of scary <laughs> yeah that's that's i think that's why i'm like i gotta i gotta try a voice right yeah. like it, <laughs> Like even if it's like not like even if it's not uh like you know it's it's never gonna match like the 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 voice actor stuff but it kind of helps me like make sure I'm reading I guess in the the tone of the character too correctly if I at least try it is how I thought yeah 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 I feel like and especially and the timing because I feel like for me sometimes I wouldn't like really try to do the voice but I would try at least eventually to get a sense of timing when I'm like flipping through the panels, like if it's an emotional moment, you kind of like slow down and you kind of like kind of take your time, yeah. you know, like, um, and even if you can't do the voices, listen, <laughs> I rem you, I rem <laughs> you don't I rem have to do the voices. I'm just saying that for people out there listening. You don't like, have swear. to. Yeah. You don't have to. I remember it backfiring actually a little bit when I was on Apple and Onion, I would try you know to impersonate their voices a little bit and the creator was like you're making them sound too posh he wouldn't say like he wouldn't say like oh bother or something i don't know like like because we were also pitching lines and like you know and so so i was you know writing like like a, a spent you know they're doing like tricks with a water bottle or something and it's like this movie is called slippy birthday and like and i'm and i'm <laughs> like basically doing a voice that's like the creator's accent <laughs> and, yeah. and, I, and i was i was like I, I gotta be a little careful when i'm doing this voice mm -hmm. I, think I, I, think that's... I have a confession oh go ahead oh no i want to hear your confession first that's more fun <laughs> yeah like uh i i also did like a freelance board for apple and onion and that was like the exception to my role like i don't know if i could do the british accents right. well right. <laughs> i tried i tried i tried my best and i oh, yeah off. but yeah but but I did have I did get notes that were like he wouldn't they wouldn't say this or this like you know this uh this slang or whatever um yeah so you le you you learn <laughs> I mean, there's definitely accents that you don't want to do you know I think it's the hardest thing, thing right I think it's the hardest thing right it's like you don't uh, I mean especially for me because it was because English is my second language and there's like things that you're like you can get like so in your head about like oh like would would a character actually say this or like is this actually funny or like is this offensive like am i like accidentally being like really offensive right now <laughs> you know mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. like yeah no it's like really scary 
you have you have to just hope that it's a it's a safe place to mess up which is hard to do because it's also a place where you assume you can get fired <laughs> so 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 and and it, you know balancing you know like everything being on the line with like okay like we're just a bunch of artists here we're trying to get across a joke we all want this thing to be good i'm trying to draw jake and it is absolutely impossible without a reference uh, sorry i'm like this is driving me insane he's got such a unique face <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's the it's the eyes right like they got the that sort of right okay you guys have to like draw jake for me so i can like copy no, it I, I don't even know i don't know can i do it i don't know if i can do it oh it's one of those like draw from memory and i'm like god damn it like i can't <laughs> okay i cheated i like looked them up <laughs> <laughs> okay jason has got jake down wait did you so were you um did you do any boards for um, adventure time i have not dude your drawings are to. so good You're, like i'm like i was like man you look like you've worked on that show uh amber did for a little bit like and i used to visit the the office all the time because uh, like we were i was on like craig at the time and they were working on i think i think some some of the distant lands ones mm -hmm. i think that's what they're called Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so, cause, so you've you've been at Cartoon Network like how long actually? Like how long were you there? I Oops. started I started there in 2014, and I think I was there. God, when did Craig end? I think it, Craig ended in 20, 20 either 2020 or 2021. Oh really? I think, I thought... I think no, maybe it was 2022. It went for because we were in the we were there for a bit. Yeah. Did you work on any of the movies? I the... did. Yeah, I worked on the Craig of the Creek movie. Yeah. How was the yeah. process different between the movie and the show and the TV show? The the movie, like uh, you know, it's like a it's a whole through line. Like it's not just like a little ten bit. So like we would get like portions at different spots, which is kind of fun. It felt like very similar to working on the the show, but we had a little bit more freedom with the camera and we had like three D assets to work with because we had that uh the boat like the big pirate ship. Oh my god, that's yeah. <laughs> Did you have so, to learn Blender for for that, or did you already kind of know 3D? I had, I think we had like a like a like a couple of little like Blender like knowledge. So like it was enough to where like I could like uh, take a a picture of the ship and like you know manipulate it. So like it was just like that that starting you know that Blender knowledge, which is now like I think becoming like more like prominent as time goes on, like an animation. I do feel like Blender, yeah, Blender is definitely like becoming well because it's free, so. <sighs> it's becoming like a tool that you're kind of like required to use in a lot of yeah. productions because they're doing a lot of 3d assets like even on the show that i'm on right now it's a feature and we we just got like some models from this dive and it's like all right well you can take some screenshots or like you, you have to kind of go inside of it to kind of like see how you can do your layouts and stuff mm-hmm i i have mixed feelings about it because i i think that sometimes it can get overused and then the board artists are doing things that the background artists might not be able to do. Like, I, it, I, I feel like it makes an excuse for board artists to do a lot of animated backgrounds that aren't being carved out and planned quite as like it's yeah that maybe they're that that part isn't being thought about. And I wonder what, how much that costs productions. But that's yeah. that's that's just a hot take for that's a little hot take for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you got to be really like um, it helps to be like specific with what you want to do with it in your pipeline. In unless the backgrounds do have three D, you know what I mean. Like if that's the case, then I get it. But I I see a lot of new boards where the camera is just moving the whole time and like the people aren't designing like banana pans and like like coming up with mm. good like bg tricks where they're like helping the background artists out it's just like redrawn backgrounds a whole lot and i think that can get a little rough or it forces the production into doing 3d backgrounds which so so i don't, I don't know I, I i have mixed feelings about it i think it's a really good tool but i um sometimes i wonder how if how much that is taken into account Mm -hmm. yeah sorry to get up on my pedestal i don't really have a pedestal about it i was just i don't know i don't know i don't know if i've said this that to anybody but i've been feeling that yeah I, no man i feel you 
That's funny that you bring that up because I do, I mean, I feel like as a board artist, there's always moments when we like kind of like think about, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a board artist thing or like a director thing or like what, but there's a moment when you start thinking about pipelines and how to like make things easier for everybody. Cause like, it's true. Like if you do come up with too many backgrounds or like if you, if you have too many angles of the same shot, then you're just making like designs life harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that would be, I think that that is the kind of stuff that should get streamlined from the supervising director if they can and or yeah. the showrunner. But I feel like usually that would be the supervising director. Usually my policy for doing those kind of like ambitious shots are like, like I'll ask the director, I'll, I'll say like, hey, I was mm -hmm. thinking about doing like a POV thing here that's sort of experimental, animated backgrounds. Do we do we have the budget to do kind of something like this? Or is that is this am I gonna do all this work and then it's just gonna get cut for budget or or something like that? And then they, they'll usually give me an honest answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why like it's it's really good to have those like clear lines of communication. Which like yeah. I feel like sometimes it can be more difficult, like as shows are more remote in general. Like, cause, uh, just having like, cause I don't know when you're in house, it's just like, hold on, I'm going to take like three steps. Hey, is this okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and then like, if you're working all remote, it's like, you got to set up a meeting. Like sometimes you got to wrangle the, um, like a, like a production assistant into setting up the meeting. If you don't have the power to do that, or I don't know, everything feels a little bit more formal. I guess you can always like shoot a message, but sometimes you're like, ah, is it... that's I don't know. true conversations are good mm -hmm. yes especially if you're not like much of a texting person i feel like for me because i grew up on the internet i'm like i love just kind of like typing words but i totally can see like how for a lot of people that like for a lot of people it's been kind of hard like remote just because it's like like what you just described like oh it feels so formal and it's like all these extra steps that i don't have to think about when i'm like just there and i can just walk over Mm -hmm. let's see we have like a ton of questions from our listeners do you want to get into some questions sure yeah i'm opening the file again because my computer was like it's too much i just realized for some reason like when i opened it in chrome now it's fine it's just Weird. edge yeah edge was like no you can't do jamboard in edge i <laughs> I guess this is what's going to slowly happen for anybody who's listened to the podcast for a while. Google Jamboard is um, going to end in October. Our drawings and... are going to look different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think Google is just like giving up on on doing any kind of maintenance on Jamboard. So I think that's why like it's like not compatible with Edge anymore. <laughs> oh no! All right, so we're gonna start. <clears throat> Our drawings are going to start looking good, guys. <laughs> That's how it be prepared works. to we're gonna be unleashed basically we've been spending this whole time with like weighted clothing training and it's gonna be that like rock <laughs> or that like piccolo moment where they take it off and it makes a crater when it hits the ground because we're gonna be drawn with like magma i think next and uh we have different brushes we have layers we have all kinds of stuff i feel like it's too too many options, but um, that is like a, a huge argument. Maybe that's gonna be like a spinoff episode where Sean and I just kind of get get in a huge like fake fight about like why Jamboard is better than Magma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can argue about it as much as you want, but it's this is going away. <laughs> exactly, <I mean. laughs> it's like a losing a losing battle. Uh, <laughs> but we do have questions for our listeners. For Jason and our patron Mallory asks you, Jason, what do you think the animation industry would look like in five to ten years with it changing so much recently? Ooh, I'm I, I've been thinking or wondering like if we're gonna see a lot more like boutique kind of studios like Grackle and stuff like that. Mm. Hmm. Just I don't know. It's it's a weird landscape that, like right now, so it's kind of hard to hard to tell, but it's the kind of the companies kind of like consolidate and stuff looks like a, a little different and i think there's going to be a lot more like teams maybe from all over the place kind of like how that is like mm -hmm. remote studios that yeah yeah because the last the last thing i was on was fully remote and i don't think they ever had any intention of having like a single you know an office ever so i wonder if we'll see more situations like that going forward 
Can yeah, you I mean, talk I... about what that was? Oh, that was a, that was my experience on uh, A24. Ooh, oh, very shit. cool, very cool. Yeah. Is 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 that announced yet? Do you know? Are you allowed to I, talk about that? I I believe the title has been announced, and I don't think anything else. I think that's like number one, Happy Family USA. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been announced because I've 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 seen people talk about it uh, online, and that's a script driven show, right? I believe so. Yeah, like um, I I when I came into the portion, I was a like a storyboard layout artist. So the, oh. the actual like boarding stuff had had been finished. So I was mo- like, it was a lot of putting things like on model for oh. like the animation studios, which is like a yeah. I was like, oh, wait, I didn't wait. Know so we... th- it had a a layout department. There's a lot of places that don't uh do that. Yeah, anymore. that was like a, I that I felt the same way. I'm like, oh, layout. That's that's unique. I didn't expect that. So that was a that was a like a like a real unique experience um and we we had like a pretty sizable layout team i don't know how much of this i'm allowed to share but yeah i was storyboard layout layout oh, that's, was, existed here that's that awesome. is so awesome like honestly that makes me so happy because that is like my biggest gripe ever where i'm like oh, i can't believe like layout i think for me layout is the one part that i wish we got back in the pipelines because because it else everything falls onto boards so much like then boards has to do so much we have to think about and so hearing that there was like a layout department is just so nice <laughs> can, can we talk um, about um the basics of layout uh just for the people mm-hmm. that are listening that don't know what layout is uh yeah so um layout would be like you know you have the boards you have like the rough like uh, idea of where things would be and layout is like that next step in the process where you're getting everything ready and about what you're going to actually see like on tv so the characters are like on model you're you're plugging in like the background that the background team made and putting everything in its like proper place like so it's a it's a lot more like clean like a like finished drawings i guess in the in the process yeah. ideally there's there's a lot of productions where layout has been folded into the storyboard artist's responsibility which is the mm-hmm. it, it basically results in a lot of storyboard artists having to storyboard incredibly cleanly with a lot of key poses too like key posing out every single step that they're making and making them very clean so that they can basically ship those boards overseas and the people overseas have exactly what they need to draw with no guesswork Mm -hmm. yeah but i miss layout and i i (laughs) I do it i do it on 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 the freelance projects i i do a an abbreviated layout phase where i like before we move into animation we have keyframe a keyframe artist put at least one finished drawing of all the characters in a scene almost like a little snapshot with the background in Mm -hmm. to to make sure that the animators getting that shot have all of the information they need to before they start and and i think it helps unify it too a little bit yeah that helps a lot because i feel like uh you can easily get characters looking like too small or too big right Mm -hmm. yeah if you don't have that little like snapshot layout like you were describing uh sean because it's so easy to just like even though even though you could draw it really clean in your boards for if if the background team just draws the background a little tiny bit differently, that can change things a lot when the animators like try to copy the poses from the the boards. Sometimes it's it's as simple as as small of a change as uh, the floor is slightly different, so the feet don't yeah. look planted anymore, yes. or if they make a little bit of a different path so that the character has to walk slightly differently or something like that yeah Yeah. i actually try to storyboard as much as i can without any contacts like feet on the floor because it's such a hassle to animate to draw Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah all my scenes are in space so they're all floating around they don't have to make contact with anything (laughs) they're underwater it's only underwater scenes for me (laughs) you're you're a you're a floating (laughs) specialist like oh you got a board with floating call you gotta call sean (laughs) the best <laughs> oh oh no props they none of the characters need to touch anything okay let's get sean in here uh, i just got really good at like very slowly waving hair that's all mm-hmm. so funny or like magicians just like a like a guy <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, yeah. spells <laughs> it's like it's like a very specific kind of board artist 
It's just like, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> if 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 you were to describe the way you like like I don't know if you are or not but if if you were to describe the way that uh, your lane has been carved out uh as far as board specialty what would you say is the way that you have gotten pigeonholed well I guess if you look at like uh the two shows I've been on the longest like uh Craig and Clarence like they they are somewhat like I guess they like grounded kids comedy because they're both like kind of in in real life and as things you know do get kind of like like fantastical and extreme at times it feels like there's like still like an element of like I guess kids at play maybe mm. that seems kids like at play? Get, oh that's good yeah, yeah that's I cool that's what a lot of the stuff I've done I, I but I remember I remember seeing your boards and I and I like that they have like an anime flair to them like a, you have like a very fun sense of like cinematic and like almost like an anime edge to your poses and shot choices which is really cool yeah and i think that played really well in, in craig because like ben is such a like you know they're such big fans of anime so there is like you know i think there's a little bit of like that in i think every person who works on craig's boards is like a love of like anime style like I guess cartooning. <laughs> mm -hmm. It just le leaks into it every once in a while. It's in some yeah. staging or like some subtle poses or something. It's like all of a sudden they're really dynamic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. this person, they were they were up in the blockbuster renting, renting VHSs at some point <laughs> from the <laughs> anime section. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's an interesting way that storyboard artists end up finding their place like I, I feel like there are some crews where like a, a director will try to get a board artist who is really good at action and then they'll have another board artist who they're like you know this is our funny guy or like you know and and i th i think that's interesting to to talk about how we like a end up kind of like falling into a like you know uh, unless you truly are a swiss army knife you know what i mean unless you mm -hmm. are or, you know can do a little a little bit of everything I, i've been on crews where i was the person that like they had a scene that was boring or kind of sucked that they needed to make funny like they're like mm -hmm. this scene isn't good can you make this phone call scene funny somehow mm -hmm. and and that's where i would that's like for a little bit that's where i lived on that crew like in doing mm -hmm. that you were like the plus artist like we need the pluser get in here <laughs> amp get, it up. get the pluser this the scene is boring they're just talking on skype is there any way that we could make the scene better <laughs> dude that's the thing that's, that's why I like like dialogue scenes especially when you're like on a comedy show are like kind of daunting for me sometimes because it's like you have a lot mm -hmm. a lot of dialogue and it's all exposition and you're like i can't just have these characters standing around and giving right. away all this exposition you have to find like funny things to happen yeah it's like and sometimes it's like they're harder in that way they're harder in the way that you have so much more creative work to do yeah and if you want to add something that like you know won't be distracting too is like like right. such a like a like a line to ride like it can't take away from the scene yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly kind of like finding that balance of like it's funny but you're still paying attention to what's being said so people aren't like oh i don't know what's going on i i, f I feel like i've worked on like one of the greatest examples of th crazy things happening during a calm conversation shows which is the midnight gospel i feel like i've trained <laughs> for that role where yeah. where like they're having a calm conversation but they're trying they're also trying to escape the white house and shoot zombies or <laughs> whatever it is and uh <laughs> yeah i feel like i've trained to be pigeonholed into that place that's so true that episode mm. was so good i i know yeah. you like whenever you bring it up i, I remember it and i'm like such a good i think it's probably my favorite episode of midnight gospel oh, that's by the awesome. way. except that i didn't watch the last one so maybe the last one's better but so far this oh, is my were, favorite were, were you not ready emotionally for the last episode yeah the I, last one's a real real heavy emotional one I, I think i was just like watching it with my boyfriend and he was just kind of like the show's just like it's just like a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I i will say if you if you want I, I that last episode is I think the episode that makes the show f feel like it means something 
like overall yeah, everybody like, cried i remember when people watched it and everybody was like oh it got me it got me so hard and they were like uh like like in the in the fields and they were like yeah yeah so i was just like i was like well you know what maybe uh maybe we just want to go back to king of the hill for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i mean you don't like you know you don't always want to feel like that but i i i think that um uh, every once in a while, somebody's going through something similar, and they and they, it's it's almost like a therapy session a little bit. I think mm-hmm. about about coping with loss. Not not to take it to a, not to take this conversation to a, a, a sad direction. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that was like a that was a great show. That was a show. That was one of those shows when you're like, you know, wish I could work on on that kind of thing that that actually leads to that question that um like i i know a lot of the time we work on you know we work on like funny stuff we make goofs like was there a time over your career or when you're working where you felt like you were working on something that meant more than just being like a oh, well, i'm working on a silly cartoon like have you have you ever worked on an episode that was like that had something a little something extra in it that you could feel yeah, like from like like you know, mean like a, like you know, an emotional level, like you know, po- possibly, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, so, something mm-hmm. where you're like, okay, this isn't just a silly cartoon anymore. This is like, this means some. This is going to affect somebody in some way. Yes, um, I think one of the last episode I worked on on Craig, uh, like I can't, I can well, it hasn't come out yet, so I can't say oh. too much. But I think that uh, that definitely hits that mark, like like especially in a like like an emotional and kind of tone did that put more pressure on it or or were you like i'm ready for like i'm ready to like give a little bit of something something to to this i think i think at the time because like you know we we got that sort of like this like the our our season our final season was kind of like order was cut in half so i think like we i was in the right kind of emotional headspace already Mm -hmm. to be kind of like tackling an episode with the same sort of themes because you know, where we're dealing with, um, you know, the the show ending like kind of suddenly. So, mm. uh, at, at that point, I was just kind of there, <laughs> and I, 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 I don't know. I felt like I was already really there emotionally. So, like doing the boards, like, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> That's cool, cause cause sometimes you have to get yourself to. I mean, and this goes for comedy too. There are many mm-hmm. times when you have to push yourself to be in a headspace that you might not be feeling like you have to like go in and you're worried about your cat going to the hospital and you have to write a funny joke Mm -hmm. that morning or you have to you know you're in like a giggly funny mood and you're being silly but you have to write a scene where someone dies and there's a character crying how 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 do you um how do you get yourself how do you get yourself there like because this happens to everybody you know Mm -hmm. i think it's like the you know you we're, we've we're we're old we've gone through like like a lot of like the experience. <laughs> you know? we're old enough to where we've gone through like you know these kind of experiences so we have a familiarity with like what that sort of headspace feels like so it's just kind of like remembering like kind of recalling those moments and trying to make sure that those feelings are there you know with whatever you're creating right Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, have like the, the, do you have like specific playlists or whatever? I know I have friends who are like, I gotta get my. I have like all my different moods and all these different playlists. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of devastating losses, I used to. I had I oh. had an iPod um that was with me since like like a I like high school, and it, it made it all the way into like me starting an animation, and then I you know you wash it. <laughs> no what, a, what, a, what an awful loss yeah so there was a time and now i've just i just have to make do with my headspace but yeah i, I used to have like you know all those playlists and everything kind of curated just so for so long and now it's just like i don't know <laughs> uh, uh, spotify sad play <laughs> <laughs> what's sad these days <laughs> That's so funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, th- that's almost, it's almost like a, a nuanced way of asking how you get through creative block, but it's more of like a, an, a, a, a ways that you can emotionally shift or can control your emotions. So like, like, because you, you work on probably more funny things, how do you get yourself, 
into funny joke em up move mood. The I think the best part of that, like especially back when we were in the office more, is just you're in a space with a lot of funny people. True. <laughs> so, you know, like you have a moment, you just kind of like, I don't know, stop by someone's office, have a conversation. It's very easy to like get bits going, especially on like the Clarence and the Craig Cruz. Like <laughs> it's just, just spend a moment with some of the people around you. There's someone's you're bound to, you know, make them laugh and they're bound to make you laugh eventually. Like someone's going to do something. I don't know. Animation's full of silly people. <laughs> that's, that's good advice draw on draw yeah. the energy of the people that that are around you yeah, yeah. Uh, i wanted to kind of piggyback off the conversation we were having before like on the on the episodes that you know like uh you felt very felt very connected to because uh on twitter little evergreen one asks what's your perfect project to work on in a dream industry blue sky pie in the mm-hmm. sky i think i think like my my dream project is like it's gonna come down to like the team you know like especially after mm-hmm. like this kind of long you've been in on so many different kind of projects like even um even like the toughest one like if it's like a, a team that really kind of i don't know pull together and get along like you can get you can get through it like uh as long as the people you're with like are you know great and not adding to that stress so i think my my perfect project is just going to be full of pe- like you know funny collaborative like thoughtful people that are like really going to make the experience of making the show like a you know a joy mm-hmm. yeah do you do you if there was like all the people from Craig of the Creek going on to a project, would that be kind of pretty much your... <laughs> your... <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. I'd be very excited to go on to that project again if it had a lot of the same people. Because, yeah, I had... I had and there was, yeah, a lot of my favorite people were on that crew. A lot of people I still, like, kind of hang out with on the regular. Yeah. Little Evergreen One also asked, do you have a quote-unquote North Star creatively? Like a mission statement or core memory that keeps you going? I like how deep these are. Ooh, yeah. I, I think I think that's Danica, right? Danica's also like an incredible board artist. Getting really to the the, the root <laughs> of everything. Mm. And I, I think like I guess North Star is like I guess I just I just wanna make I I love doing this and I wanna keep doing this. And I I think it's just like reminding myself that uh I think I, I just wanna make I think I wanna make stuff that whatever whatever the themes kinda help us connect, I guess. You know, whether it's through like like humor, like mm-hmm. through you know, like dealing with like loss together or things like that. But uh, I I like I like people, and I think like anything that kind of helps, like you know, the team and like or the like the people watching the show kind of connect with it in some way. I guess I guess connection maybe. <laughs> I like I that. Stopped. That's so sweet. Yeah, human connection. Like, yeah. yeah, especially uh. Especially now, I don't know. I feel like I read online a lot of like articles or like people are lonelier and it's just like the loneliness epidemic or whatever. So I do feel like that's very relevant for like, I mean, according to what the internet tells me. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's relevant. The internet could be lying. I know. You never know. I like now I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what to believe in I, anymore. I think, there's a like... lot of pe- I think there's a lot of people that are lonely. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like every time, like, you know, I'm always, especially now, like when I can't just run into people regular, I'm always like a little bit like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to, I've, I've, I don't want to bug somebody, but <laughs> every time I've like kind of reached out, I'm like, this was great. I should do this more. It was really good to like talk to like my friends again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that they're just doing the same thing that you're doing where, where they're like, oh, I don't want to bug anybody. And yeah, they're, exactly. they're all just thinking at, at the same time and they all want to hang out, but everyone's so shy everyone's so shy (laughs) exactly it's just like you gotta you gotta just quiet that part of yourself and like send a text make a phone call just be like hey i let's hang out (laughs) yeah hanging out used to be so easy like i was constantly the the like at someone's house or someone was at my house like growing up like almost every day it's it's uh, it's it's interesting when you get older and like uh it's just that's not just happening normally all the time regularly you have to set it up. Yeah, that's funny be- that you say that because we have uh, from Instagram Eric uh, Malik Johnson who asks, "How you doing, bud? Hope you're <laughs> well." And I have to ask, but 
what's your method in drawing personal storyboards i love that it takes a podcast for um him to reach out to you <laughs> it's like you there's could... a me- messenger pigeon like we're yeah. in messenger podcast <laughs> yeah hey yeah uh, i'm doing good i hope you're doing well too bud feel free to reach out whenever but <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know especially now that like the the cat's like uh doing better but yeah i guess for personal stuff like i do i don't know i don't know if you guys ever do this but i i feel like i st- start a lot of things and i'm never like i'm never happy with it right away so i just like you know i'll start something leave it and then i'll i'll come back to it later mm. and i feel like when i'm doing like personal stuff i just like kind of hit you know something that I, I feel in the moment and then eventually it'll like the the little like the good feeling will go away and i'll, I'll move on and i just try to like revisit and come back to things and just uh, I, I i pick it i think when i in my personal drawings and personal boards I just yeah I I set it forget it and then I I come back to it later and then like oh yeah I don't hate this anymore I'm gonna keep working on this that's so interesting that's funny that you yeah like I do feel like that is a very that's very real when you're like working on something personal and you're like have like a lot of these like questions you're like I don't know if this is good I hate it blah 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 but I want I feel like now for me having like a web comic I'm like well I just have to finish it so like mm-hmm. there are moments where it's like agonizing because I'm like I hate this arc or I hate this page and everything I'm drawing is so terrible but I'm like I have to keep pushing through mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah because you have like a schedule and stuff like <laughs> the schedule is not like you know I don't mm-hmm. get paid for it so I can't do whatever I want but I do want to finish it is the thing that's the only real thing that keeps me to my well point. I mean you you also have a a viewer ba- a viewer base that keeps up with it and and likes mm-hmm. it and that's also another motivator is like yes. once you once you get other people invested in your idea then it's it's bigger than you then it's like yeah. people are asking about it and and you don't want to let people down and yeah 100% and i guess i was just yeah i was just kind of reacting to the fact that like I used to, I, I relate to like, they're like, oh, I hate this. I don't want to like show this to anybody. I like put it in a little corner and sure. not look at it. But yeah, it's it's funny too. But I feel like sometimes, you know, we're really hard on ourselves. And then yeah. it's actually not so bad, you know? <laughs> exactly. Uh-oh. That's why you just got to like, you know, leave yeah. it alone for a bit and then look at it again. Be like, oh, yeah. yeah, you know what? I was, I was really mean. This is, this is fine. I want to post it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have other, I kind of want to like lump in a couple of questions that are kind of about like process of storyboarding because we have from Twitter, Top Hat Geo, who asked, would love to know if you have any favorite tricks or secrets about storyboarding. Is there anything you do which makes your job easier? Ooh, I think, I think that's probably going back to like the, the non-linear way of jumping mm-hmm. around, right? Like that, I think that was like the big yeah like jump for me. It was like, you know what? Just hit what feels good. Hit what is clear mm-hmm. to you first, and then, yeah, like solve the the rest as you go. Like it just, yeah. Is there it's anything done. you do that makes your job harder? <laughs> that, <laughs> you, that you know that you do, but you're like, well, I want to do it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I remember I was talking to like uh, my friend the other day who, uh, you know, would revise my stuff, and they would like tell me, why are you carving out your lines? Like that's what that's what I would get when you're bored. Like like I would erase and like carve out lines, and they're like, "This is a storyboard. You don't need oh. to be doing that." And I'm like, "You're right." <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. You know, when you say carving out the lines, do you mean like you're you're drawing lots of like little lines to to make a big line? Is that what it is? Yeah, like I'll draw like you know like like I'll go over it for a bit and then like I'll erase and like there we go yeah that's nice and it's like yeah, I need to be doing ticket. that yeah I don't know you know sometimes when you're doing like a three quarter one you just like yeah I gotta look real nice you know <laughs> <laughs> that's so true mm-hmm. at comment meant is asking from Twitter in any way or amount has drawing as a career ruined drawing for yourself um. You know, I don't, I think it's had the opposite effect. I feel like it's made me more disciplined in like drawing for myself. Like at least like now, like I'm just like, like I'm kind of, I feel like I'm getting over like one of those art block bits and I'm like a, a little bit more like, yeah, you know what? I can just finish this. I can do it, whatever. So I think like, you know, having to, you know, hit 
deadlines for oh my god how long has it been i started 2014 is 20 almost almost 10 years like uh, a work just like i i think it's actually made me a little bit more disciplined in finishing what i start that's a that's actually a really awesome answer i do feel like that's i do feel like that's so true i feel like I don't know, like you were saying, the amount of work we have to churn out, eventually it doesn't seem as daunting anymore to just do like an illustration. I don't know. I feel like I remember being in school and being like, oh, I this is like very anxiety inducing to do an illustration. But now we like draw so much that so it's like, eh. Yeah. Building up your tolerance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Commitment also asks, do you have suggestions for jobs that are not in the industry while still being great for artists. SeaWorld. Hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Sea <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because I, I work I worked at like um in SeaWorld, I would work at like uh some of the rides. I would work at like some of the gift shops and I would spend a lot of time because there's like dead time and I think like any job like there's just you know there is periods where there's not much to do. And I think that's even how drawing started for me is like, well, I'm going to draw. Like nothing's going on. I'm going to draw. I'm in school. Someone's trying to teach me. I'm going to draw. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ignore them and draw. I'm going to no, ignore no, them no. and draw. Yeah. But it's like, um, you, I think whatever career you have, if you have a passion for drawing, like you just can't help it. You, you find a little space to do it <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Like, not even, like, a, on a rise and grind type of way. It's just like, oh, they got me doing it again. Ah, uh, shoot. <laughs> I I need to go get another roll of receipt tape. Sorry, Shamu. <laughs> I've used it all. <laughs> I, drew, I drew a bunch of little guys here. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. I do feel like if you really, I, I do feel like if you love it, if you love drawing enough, no matter what you end up, like doing as a career like you're you're gonna you're gonna be drawing anyway you know like if it's if it's like that passion you're just kind of like it's just easy to do yeah. sea world is probably a good place to do plain air watercolor because you don't have to bring the water you just sit <laughs> where it's gonna be wet and you just have a little paint oh my mm -hmm. God. you're like catching the droplets as they fly by for you <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. can you please stop dipping your brush in the uh aquariums or in the in the in the pool i know you're trying to rinse your brush i saw you rinsing your brush in the in the <sighs> seal enclosure yeah i'm like oh is that is that why the seals are just that much more colorful than usual <laughs> <laughs> the sea the seals are green what have you been what kind of legend of zelda art have you been doing right. like, oh, Link? sorry you don't like whimsy, huh? You don't want to, don't want a little wonder in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do my thing. At Amber Blade Jones. Asks, oh my gosh. Yeah, they have a lot of great questions. What do you believe is the most important quality of a successful storyboard artist? Um, I think I think it's like that ability to collaborate, right? Like I know we kind of like disappear into our offices and get things done at a certain point, but uh, in I think every instance, like you're being able to like play well with others, you know, whether it's like a, your board partner or your directors and everything like a, I think I think that's like really helpful because, you know, then you're you're not alone in this process. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's really great because it kind of goes into the next the next question they ask. Uh, so still Ember. Blade Jones, who asked, how do you incorporate feedback from multiple sources while maintaining the integrity of the story? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think it's helpful in a lot of the like shows I've worked on is like everybody thankfully has that same goal. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't been to a point, I'm sure, like uh, where, you know, executive notes kind of come in and like really change stuff up. I, I'm sh I think that's like probably like where you'd see more of that kind of thing, right? Where it's like, ah, oh, mm -hmm. this kind of really changes things. I remember um early on when I was just this wasn't my episode, but when I was just joining Clarence, they had just finished an episode called Fart Cactus and <laughs> It was it it you know one I I for, I I won't say which region but one region thought there was far too many farts just they they've really pushed it to the limit we gotta we gotta cut down on the number of farts and because <laughs> you know it was, there's it, there's someone with like one of those little counters like yeah like just sitting there like nope nope it's reading reaching the threshold 
yeah <laughs> i just thought that was like <laughs> this i mean this it's a it's a story about like clarence who makes a little comic about with a cactus that farts and it's about him being censored so <laughs> that is so that funny. And, and yeah it was it's just really funny to like wow yeah like but um i i just remember that was the thing spencer was like tackling when i like first like well i think like the first couple of days i was like at the studio and god bless him making sure that that got all the way through intact so i bet i bet he would have some really good answers to that question that's funny that's funny that yeah it kind of it depends on the show and also kind of depends on the um, on the team on the execs on so many different kind of like parameters whether or not you'll have to like tackle some of that stuff because we've definitely been on a i've definitely been like on thundercats roar and we had like a giant mecha episode and we like pretty much were like almost done with the animatic like with the 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 episode and then one of the execs was like we are having too many giant mecha episodes right now can you just like change it it's like literally like that what the episode's about oh my god (laughs) it's like literally no yeah (laughs) and that wasn't easy to draw that's a giant Mecca, yeah, you had to do a whole episode. <laughs> yeah, there's like multiple characters in the Mecca. Like it's like it's a whole thing. <sighs> oh my god, it's like yeah. I mean, they, they there was like some politics that you know eventually kind of like are involved, and people are like, "Come on, please." Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who late. gets to, who gets to push their Mecca episode through? Who do yeah. I have to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my oh god. god. I like this other question that Ember asks. How do you ensure that your storyboards contribute to the overall vision of the project? Mm-hmm. I think I think that comes down to like uh, like once again lines of like communication, like you're making sure mm-hmm. like uh, before, especially if you're gonna take like because sometimes it's wor- really worth it to take a big swing because mm-hmm. you're like I I my gut's telling me that this might be the way to go. And like, if you have a good relationship with like uh, your showrunners or like your directors or something, like, I think it's good to like, just to make sure everything's in the right direction, you know, ch- being able to check in and like have that sort of like, Hey, let me know if I'm off base. And like, uh, and then I think you can like, you know, feel more confident in doing mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah, I do feel like especially because shows can have like such a different style from a show to another. And like when you're adapting, there's like that moment when you're definitely like trying to figure out like, okay, what's the humor on this show? What what are the kind of jokes that my showrunner and or director like? Like what's the kind of, yeah, that does take a minute. Mm-hmm. I feel like we have some great questions from Captain Dot Mycelia from Instagram and Cornelia underscore Doodles. But we'll just end on this question from at Freeglass, which is, "What's been a big challenge for you in boarding, and what was your main takeaway and lesson you learned from it?" I think one of my my big challenges boarding was uh, especially like um. When I was coming into boards initially and I was like, you know, taking all these classes and building stuff out, like my portfolio, I was coming at it from like, like a feature perspective, which is like what a lot of my teachers did and stuff. So I think like my big shift was like making sure what I was doing was right for TV initially. Like, and and I think a lot of it comes down to it. Like, remember when you were talking earlier about like contact points and stuff like that and just, uh. I think understanding like anything that's like, you know, like I'm ha- like, you know, it's, it's challenging like for, for me to do like on this kind of like deadline, it's going to be like amplified like tenfold for the animators who get it later. So mm-hmm. I think like, like early on, you know, making that shift to like being more like economical with my like, like choices and like being like more thoughtful with that, I think was like a, like a, like a really like good kind of, lesson to instill myself especially when working with tv yeah yeah it's tough to learn the i feel like yeah it's tough it's tough to learn being like economical with boarding because i don't feel i don't think there's any place that kind of teaches that like a lot of the classes like you said it's like either feature or more kind of like cinematic or anime but it's actually kind of surprising to see that there's I don't know, like the skill of like boarding kind of like economically is uh is kind of like hard to find. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I guess we can like kind of like slowly kind of wrap up with our, we we were kind of like touching on it before, but like we love to ask for guests if you experience creative block and if you do, what does it feel like and how'd you get over it? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think every, every artist has just hit that point where it's like, there's, there's no gas in the tank. Like, especially if you've mm -hmm. like been going in, in a job, like you're going at it for a bit. And I think it's like, you know, good to, you know, set things down, like maybe like, like a go back to kind of like looking at or like engaging with art that like really got you fired up in the first place to be making things. And like a lot for me is like going back to what I like was talking about before is like, you know, do a little thing like once it's gone, just leave it. You can come back to it later. Like you just no, nothing has to be if you're in a block like immediate, just, you know, you do it, do it for you like do it until it's like like not fun and then move on and mm -hmm. then just keep that process going and like you know come back or like start again or like re-engage with things at your pace that is like that is like so emotionally mature i love this <laughs> and <laughs> hands are it's like so like in tune with your feelings and, and i and i think it's like the best Honestly, like the, the 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 most healthy way to go about it. Honestly, that is like such a great answer. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything that you want to plug? Maybe are you working on on anything or like your social media? Yeah, yeah. You know, my uh, I think my Instagram is just my my full name. I think it's just Jason McRae Dwyer, and my no, it's Jason M Dwyer is my Instagram, and my Twitter is Nubsy Three D um i'm i'm open to any sort of opportunities i i love boarding and i don't know if you ever if if you have a love for fighting games maybe hit me up <laughs> <laughs> man that was so great that was so fun to hang out thank you so much for coming on the show and that's the end of this creative block Jason, thanks for being our guest and sharing your story. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was such a blast, like, catching up and, like, yeah, getting, like, to, to hang out and answer a few questions. And uh, thank you also from me. And uh, I want to give a quick thanks to our listeners. Follow us on social media at CRTV Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. Huge thanks to our editor, Clements, for editing the podcast, Marco for helping us produce the show, and Abuka for creating the short clips that we've been putting out. If you love our show, you can support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron gets you early access to interviews and access to our Discord community. You can also support us by just interacting with our content like subscribe follow all that good stuff it helps uh the algorithm push our content up and uh, that helps us grow so click the link in the description of this episode to follow jason on all his social media and to check out our patreon i've been your host v and i was sean keeping creative and we'll see you next week bye bye